Good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Monday of Holy Week. Today is Monday, March 25th. It is good to start the week off with you, to be with you uh, in this um, holiest of weeks uh, as we remember uh, Christ's uh, journey to the cross. And so I am so glad to be able to spend this week with all of you, uh, to begin the day with you. That was Hosanna. I know it's Palm Sunday is over, but we're going to talk about Palm Sunday today, um, leading into, and that was Shane and Shane off of their Worship Initiative volume number two. So I hope you enjoyed that as we start today. We're going to be looking at the scripture that we looked at, uh, or that was read at the beginning of worship yesterday. We're going to be looking at Mark 11, beginning in verse seven. Um, and we're going to be talking about not just Palm Sunday, but that that journey into into Jerusalem. So let me say good morning to all of you. It's so good to start the day off with you, Priscilla and Barbara. I'm so glad you're both here today, keeping you in prayer as we begin this Holy Week. And Daniel and Donna, it's good to have you both here praying for you. Continue prayers for your mom, Donna. I'm glad you're here today. Good morning, Michelle and Augusta. I'm glad you're both with us today, praying for each of you this morning. And good morning, Janet and Celia. Welcome, keeping each of you in prayer this morning. Good morning, Lisa and Augusta. It's good to have both of you here. Um, I was thinking about both of you this morning, so praying for each of you today. Good morning, Macon and Susan. I'm glad you're here today, um, keeping each of you in prayer. Continued prayers for you, uh, Susan. Good morning. Sorry, Blanca and Cecilia and Admire. I'm glad you're all with us today, praying for each one of you this morning. And good morning, Sue and Debbie and Al. It's good to have you all here praying for you today. And Genevieve and Vinette, I'm glad you're with us as well, holding you both in prayer. Um, so I I thought because we didn't meet yesterday, it might be good to, to take this journey uh, into Jerusalem. And that's what we celebrate when we talk about the triumphal procession or the palm procession or what we celebrate as Palm Sunday, which was yesterday. Um, so we're going to be looking at Mark 11 and I'm going to be reading Henry now. And um, so I invite you to open up your Bibles to Mark 11 verse 7. And as you're doing that, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And uh, it's always a blessing to be able to start each day with you um, and start this week with you, but especially this week, uh, Holy Week. And so we're gonna journey through this week together. And I pray that this will be a, a deepening of your walk. Um, Easter will be wonderful, but what comes before it is really important as well. So let's uh, jump in to Mark 11, beginning in verse 7. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor, David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. So our devotion today is entitled Christ on a Donkey. Christ on a Donkey. And this is um, a reflection that I received yesterday 
from Henry Nowen. Uh, it comes out of, actually, I just got this book the other day. It might be an interesting book if you're, if you like Henry Nowen. It's called Show Me the Way and it's Daily Lenten. I should have given it to you early, but it's got the Holy Week in there. So if you're interested, it's called Show Me the Way uh, by Henry Nowen. But today's uh, devotion is entitled Christ on a Donkey. Christ on a Donkey. In the Augustiner Museum in Freiburg is one of the most moving Christ figures I know. Christ's long, slender face with a high forehead, inward looking eyes, long hair, and a small forked beard expresses a mystery of the suffering in a way that holds me spellbound. As he rides into Jerusalem, surrounded by people shouting Hosanna, cutting branches from trees and spreading them in his path, Jesus appears completely concentrated on something else. He does not look at the excited crowd. He does not wave. He sees beyond all the noise and movement to what is ahead of him. An agonizing journey of betrayal, torture, crucifixion, and death. His unfocused eyes see what nobody around him can see. His high forehead reflects a knowledge of things to come far beyond anyone's understanding. There's a melancholy, but also peaceful acceptance. There is insight into the fickleness of the human heart, but also immense compassion. There is a deep awareness of the unspeakable pain to be suffered, but also a strong determination to do God's will. Above all, there is love, an endless, deep, and far-reaching love born from an unbreakable intimacy with God and reaching out to all people, wherever they are, were, or will be. There is nobody whom he does not fully love. Every time I look at this Christ on the donkey, I am reminded again that I am seen by him with all my sins, guilt, and shame, with all his forgiveness, mercy, and compassion. Just being with him in the Augustiner Museum is a prayer, and I look and look and look, and I know that he sees the depths of my heart, and I do not need to be afraid. When you, um, when I traveled to the Holy Land, the last days of that, we, we begin in, in Bethlehem, we spend time in the West Bank, and then we go up to the Sea of Galilee, we kind of follow the footsteps of Jesus. And then we end in Jerusalem. And when we come to Jerusalem, um, before we get into Jerusalem, uh, we, we start on, a, on a, um, an, a hill that looks down. Um, and uh, we get to see the, 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 the dome of the rock. That's the, that's the big golden dome that people know of when they look at Jerusalem. But the, the next day, so we do that at night or, or at the end of the day uh, as we go in and settle before we settle in our hotel, but we get that view of Jerusalem. But the next day we go back to that same place and we begin the descent, the, what the palm procession descent. And it's down a hill. And as you're going down the hill, you go into the Mount of Olives. 
And what's always been really impactful for me is that I, you know, when I, as a child, I thought of Jesus kind of just taking this steady journey, like it was a straight journey, but literally he's descending into Jerusalem and he sees where he is going. It's a very visible, um, almost mourning, right? And as we take that descent, one of the first places that we stop when we get to the bottom of the hill is the Garden of Gethsemane. This has always hit me so deeply because as we're coming down the hill, we stop, we stop at um, another cathedral called the, the um, it's where Jesus wept for Jerusalem. And I think, I've often, um, when I take this journey, I realize the depth of his heart for what will come, but more than that, for his people that still are so blind and are still missing, still not seeing clearly. And when we get down to the Garden of Gethsemane, without fail, it is always a place um, that touches my heart so deeply because I, I mourn, um, I am fully aware, or at least I feel like I'm fully aware of the depth of his um, grief for us, you know, that, that, that we, it was back then that humanity couldn't get it. And we are still no different. When we look at the Holy Land today, when we see what's happening there, when we see what's happening in our country, when we see what's happening in our cities, in our communities, when we see the blindness in our own homes, and, and I grieve deeply alongside Jesus, why is it that we still cannot see the depth of God's love for us. Why is it that we still cannot see one another with the love that Christ looks at each one of us? <sighs> and so as we begin this week that we call holy, my friends, I invite you to a journey of prayer, deep prayer, for ourselves, we need to begin there. For ourselves, why is it that I cannot see again and again? Why is it, we're, we're doing Acts right now, Bible study, but cannot the, the scales fall from my eyes that I might see the way that Jesus sees each one of us, see myself that way, pray for ourselves. Pray for yourself, but also pray for our world. Our world needs uh, prayer and action, right? They go hand in hand. But this week, this week that we call holy, I invite you to a journey of deep prayer. Deep prayer for, for our world, for, our, for the land that we call holy, for our communities, for our country, for our families, I invite you to this journey of deep prayer. And as we move into this time of prayer, I wrote down a bunch of words as, as I was listening. Um, Hosanna means save us. Save us, Lord. Hosanna, save us. The people in that palm procession, they had hope that Jesus would save us. But when he didn't save them the way that they wanted to be saved, they turned against him. Friends, we need to go back to that prayer of Hosanna, asking once again that God might pour out God's spirit on us, um, that we might see the way that, that we have been seen and that we might see one another, that we might break be, uh, go beyond the, all the divisions that keep us separate and we might come to know the depth of God's love for us and all of humanity. So 
as we come into this time of prayer, I am lifting each one of you up. If there are prayers that are on your heart today, I invite you to put them in the chat as we move into this time of prayer. Um, praying for Rupert Guy who had a stroke, holding him in prayer this day, Rachel. What are the prayers that are on your heart? What are the prayers uh, that, that God knows, um, but maybe you need us to be in prayer for you today as well? Let us move now um, into this time of prayer, and I pray that the prayer will continue as we move through uh, this week that we call holy. Let us pray. God, we call out to you as those from the crowd shouting Hosanna. Blessed is the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Save us, Lord. Save us from our broken patterns. Save us from our addictions. Save us from all the divisions that we set up. Save us. Lord, we need you. Our world needs you. As you descended into Jerusalem, you saw, you saw the brokenness. You saw what would happen ahead. You knew the road and you did not. You did not back out. You went all in for us. We cannot imagine that. Our fear leads us to run again and again. Our fear leads us down paths of destruction. But you call us to something different. And so today, Lord, we come crying out, save us. Help us to see the way that you see the world. Help us to know a different path. And when that path gets difficult, help us to keep moving forward, trusting that you will be there leading the way. <sighs> Forgive us, Lord. It is so hard for us to love the way that you love. This sacrificial love. It is so difficult. It is difficult for us to accept, to believe that we deserve it. And it is difficult to live it out. And so be with us on this journey as we face and see all that Jesus did on our behalf. Help us to see more deeply, to accept that love, to offer it, not just to the ones that are easy to love, but to all. Lead us this week, Lord. Lead us in paths, right paths, for your name's sake. Show us the way. Save us, Lord. Hosanna, save us. Lord, we lift up all, I lift up all the prayers of each person that is on the call today, whether they are here at 6.30 or later watching. Lord, you know their hearts. You know what they are walking through. You know the path, the challenges they face, the people that they are praying for and love. You are well aware of all of this. And so, Lord, we need, we need you today. Your world 
need you. Help us to turn to you, to see with your eyes. We lift all of this to you. And in your precious name, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, we are praying for, for to be strong in faith for Rupert praying for broken families, for a friend struggling to forgive himself. Lord, hear our prayers for our children. Save us, Lord, from the damage that we do to ourselves and others. Praying that poverty would be eradicated in our lifetime. Praying prayer for revolutionary. We lift all of these prayers up to you, God. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Praying for each one of you today, my friends, sending, um, praying that you know the depth of God's love for you. God loves you, and so do I. Have a very blessed Monday of Holy Week, and I look forward to being with you tomorrow in prayer.